Hi everyone, the champions that are in set 5.5 have just been announced and the ones that are getting removed are also announced. So today we're going to go through all of that. Um, we already seen the new system, so you can watch my other video uh, on that. I'll link that in the description. Now the first trait is just specific to Gwen, and so it is kind of her ability more than a new trait. And she summons this kind of uh, mist around her that's one hex wide, and all champions within that um, mist they take damage reduction while they're in there. So we'll have to see more on Gwen before we can kind of judge how strong that's going to be. Although it does sound pretty good. Kind of like a pseudo uh, redemption for now. Uh, the next big trait is Sentinel. At the start of combat, the Sentinel with the highest health gets a shield that grants attack speed each time it is applied. When the shield is destroyed or expires, it will pass onto the ally with the lowest percentage health. So this feels very much like a pseudo Dark Star or Redeem trait. You kind of have this buff that goes from champion to champion, and you can somewhat position around it. It's going to be a bit hard, though, because you have to... It's very hard to control who's going to be the lowest per, uh, percentage health. Um, so it should be interesting to see like how effective this is going to be as you... It's going to be very hard to control who gets that buff. Next up is the Cannoneers. Every fifth Cannoneer attack is replaced with a cannon shot that deals percent of that attack damage and an explosion around the target as physical damage. And so we have uh, four new champions that all carry this trait. We'll talk about those later. And this looks like a kind of like a blaster trait from uh, set three, only that instead of hitting multiple champions, you just kind of get one big shot. So yeah, kind of this should look really, really cool. And it should be like, uh, feels very much like Jin's ability in a way as well. Like Jin, Jin's passive is just uh, built into all of these with the uh, once the trait is active. And the God King trait is removed, as we can see, so Garen has a new uh, th a new trait, and that is uh, Victorious. And when a Victorious champion scores a kill, the next attack is empowered to deal 40% of the target's missing health as bonus magic damage. Well, this certainly seems uh, a lot better than the God King synergy, because that was very, uh, almost uh, close to useless, I would say. Now, I don't know if we're going to see full AP Garen's, but... I feel like this is going to be a, a kind of a nice bonus. Like once you get Garen 2 and you have like a have like a death cap or, or something on him, he's going to he might actually do a lot of damage now. But we'll see. So now we can see the removed trait here, Dragon Slayer, Eternal, Coven and God King got removed. Uh these are just specific to Kindred and uh, Darius Garen. Coven getting removed, I'm fine with to be honest. I didn't really play the synergy at all towards the end. The only time I ever played it was when uh, Shadow Blue of the Blanc was uh, overpowered. Or I played a little bit with Katarina. I didn't really get to test out all the silly stuff with like Coven Ivern and all that, but you know. But all in all, I think it's uh, fine because the champions were kind of uh, awkward in that trait. Uh, for Dragon Slayer gets removed, which is, uh, I think the trait itself getting removed is fine because it was a bit complicated and it didn't really feel exciting at all. Uh, it was more so the champions that I'm going to miss with that one. So let's talk about the new champions. Uh, the first one is Senna. Uh, Senna launches black mist towards the farthest enemy stopping the first enemy hit that enemy is stunned and all nearby enemies are dealt magic damage so this looks like a very uh basic ability she uh, targets farthest away and then it does a little bit of splash damage at the end which is uh expected from a one cost to just have a basic ability this ability feels very similar to Callista's ability she throws the farthest away as well a bit similar to nidalee from set 4 and 4.5 as well so kind of going to be this kind of like execute uh, type of deal. Now the new two cost. First off, we got Irelia. Irelia surrounds herself with blades for four seconds, getting damage reduction. Increased by 10% each time she attacks, up to 90%. When the effect ends, she strikes the target for magic damage. So she becomes super tanky for four seconds is what it looks like. And then she does a bit of damage. So looks like she's going to be a bit of a tank in the skirmisher comp because that is her trait. Uh, and the legionnaire comp as well, I guess. So I guess she's kind of like replacing uh, Pantheon's row, so she'll be the one you're stacking with the uh, tank items a lot of the time in the skirmisher comp. At least that's what it looks like for now. Because she deals magic damage, so it's not going to scale with like AD or anyway, so you're probably never running carry Irelia. Alright, next up is uh, Pike. Pike leaves a phantom at his location, then dashes behind the farthest away enemy. After one second, his phantom returns to Pike, dealing magic damage to all enemies. It passes through and uh, stunning them, yeah. This is just a reprint of Pike. So, yeah, excited to have him back, because he was a pretty cool uh, positioning assassin. Uh, Tristana is making a return to set 5. Uh, Tristana leaps behind the farthest enemy, retargeting to them and gaining attack speed for 4 seconds. 
If there is an enemy adjacent to her, she instead leaps as far away from all enemies as she can. The looks like she tries to jump in and execute a champion, but if there are any champions next to her, she will jump away? This ability feels really awkward, because it almost feels like she just jumps in and ints, and then she jumps away if there's too many enemies back there. So that's uh but you can like position around it as well since it's farthest away enemy. This ability is really weird. I gotta actually like test the game before I see how this works, because it seems close to useless. Almost. Misfortune is the next up. Misfortune rains three waves of bullets down around her target, dealing magic damage to the enemies in the area and reducing their incoming healing by 50% for 8 seconds. This is essentially just a reprint of the set 3 Misfortune, it sounds like, and it's, it's probably going to be a lot weaker since, since she is a 3 cost instead of a 5 cost. And they also have the uh, heal, the grievous, applying Grievous Wounds uh, thing in there as well. So yeah, pretty standard uh, ability, not too much to talk about here. Probably going to be a good backliner, you stack with some AP items. Right, next up is Rakan. Rakan launches a feather towards his target, dealing magic damage to the first enemy hit. Rakan then heals all nearby allies for a percent of their missing health, with an increased radius if the feather killed an enemy. This ability looks very snowball-y in a way, because he throws a feather, and if it kills somebody, then he does even more healing when he's to his team. And then he's also Renewer, so you're running... Running some Renewers as well, so you're healing them up so they're gaining more mana, so... Getting a Rakan to kill, or to get a kill with this Feather, looks really important, at least from this ability, considering he gets a bonus. So you probably want to stack him with the uh, AP items, it looks like, if you're uh, playing playing uh, him in either Sentinels or Renewers. Especially if you're playing him in the Renewers. Our next up is Fiddlesticks. After a brief channel, Fiddlesticks teleports behind his target and summons a Murder of Crows dealing magic damage per second to all enemies within. Enemies that die within the flock extend its duration by one second and heal fiddlesticks for a percentage of their maximum health. So this kind of looks like he's going to be a carry because you want that to just keep going and keep going. Considering that it lasts longer because uh, every time you get a kill it lasts one second longer, you probably, you almost definitely want to stack him with uh, some damage items. So he's either going to become like a new AP carry or he's just going to become uh, like a Morello bot just like Kenanis right now. Uh, cause, uh, you can, he's a Revenant as well, so he's just gonna charge in, die, and then probably apply Morello to a bunch of people. He's like an Abomination and a Mystic as well. You are probably not going to be carrying him a lot of the time, just based on his tags. He looks like a support carry, unless we get some sort of, like, Mystic, uh, like, Vanguard Mystic build back with Fit Philistic's carry, but probably just a Morello user the more I think about it. Alright, so next up is Galio. Galio charges the area around him for two seconds, taunting all enemies within while gaining damage reduction. Upon releasing the charge, Galio deals magic damage to all enemies within three hexes, and heals for 50% of the damage blocked. Now, this is a really powerful CC ability. It feels a bit similar to Shen from uh, set 4 and 4.5. Uh, he's also gaining... he also becomes really tanky while he does this. So it's just going to be like the standard frontline uh, tank, and you can kind of tell that by his trade as well. He's got like the knight trade and... Uh, the Sentinel Draconic trade. Probably going to be like your uh, your primary carry and can also be uh, can probably solo frontline in a lot of cases. Since he gets the damage reduction, you stack him with three tank items as well. Especially if you get one of those Radiant tank items on him. You can also do some really interesting positioning stuff as well with this probably. Like it looks like he uh, he's probably going to have range. Uh, his, his range is probably just going to be one, but you could probably uh, put him in the backline to taunt assassins as well. Alright, next up is a Lucian. Lucian fires 12 shots in a direction over 4 seconds, each hitting for 50% of his attack damage and dealing magic damage. Lucian fires extra shots based on his attack speed. Lucian will dash during the culling to keep hitting enemies. I think this is pretty much just a reprint from the set 2 Lucian, if I'm uh, interpreting this correctly, because he just spams a bunch of shots, dashes around, and he deals both AP and AD, so yeah. Lucian was a pretty cool carry back uh, in, uh, in set 2, and... Uh, the only thing that sucks is he can't really control where he's uh, dashing, at least from uh, what it looks like here, since he doesn't target a specific user. Now, moving on to the 5 costs, both of these are new. Uh, I think even to League as well. This guy, Akshan, is a ranger. He's replacing Kindred, and uh, he has a passive and an active ability, it looks like. So, the passive is that Akshan's attacks reduce the target's armor by 50% for 5 seconds, so... This looks like he has a built-in Last Whisper. 
considering he's a ranger, he's uh, kind of replacing Darius's role for Aphelios. So it kind of sucks that Aphelios is probably going to be very dependent on this guy. He's going to have the same problem he has in the current set, where if you don't hit Darius, you're a lot weaker, because you kind of don't want to build Last Whisper on uh, Aphelios, since it becomes redundant when you get in that Darius. So this looks like the set already has... Uh, it's going to have the same problem as the previous one has with uh, Darius and Garen. Where like Karma is uh, significantly weaker until you hit Garen, and Aphelios is significantly weaker until you hit uh, Darius. So looks like uh, Aphelios is going to be very tied to hitting Akshan, especially since he's a ranger and he has that built-in Last Whisper. Akshan launches the grappling hook and swings untargetably towards the farthest enemy, gaining attack speed for four seconds. Akshan will continue to attack the nearest enemy at double his attack speed while swinging. This kind of feels like a copy paste of Samira. So he kind of like just uh, jumps to the to the back line and then just spams a bunch of shots and then he dips. So it looks like an uh, interesting ability. You can definitely, you could probably like transfer Aphelios items to him later and like give it to a five cost board. I don't know. Maybe you can be able to do that. Very similar to like how sometimes you would transition items to like Samira once you hit nine and you've got like a chosen Samira. So next up is Gwen. She already had that... Uh, Inaminate ability, so she's kind of already support unit based on that ability, and she's also a mystic, so this is not going to be like a carry, at least from uh, her tags. Gwen dashes around her target and performs three rapid snips in a cone in front of her, plus a percent of the target's maximum health. Snips steal one armor and magic resist from the target. Every other cast, Gwen will perform double the amount of snips. So it's definitely going to depend on how big her mana pool is. But it looks like you can kind of use her as utility as well, since she shreds armor and MR. Um, yeah, this ability sounds super powerful, but again, we'll have to see how big her mana pool is before we can uh, judge it. Because uh, if she, if it's very low, you can almost like put blue buff on her. Then she be can become like your uh, armor and MR uh, shredding, so you don't like you don't need to hit uh, either Garen or Akshan for uh, can, for AD and AP comps. So it's gonna be interesting. Looks like yeah, these two are very like utility utility based and can also carry so should be interesting here are all the removed champions uh, i think that all of these are fine to get removed uh the only th ones i'll miss are like trundle and pantheon i'll miss because i really enjoy playing those two in skirmishers and i think they and i think they provide a lot of interesting uh, positioning complexity to the skirmisher comp so a bit sad to see those uh removed and then we also see katarina go as well which uh, I'm not really going to miss because it was very annoying to kind of hunt her down in the early game. Looks like the new champions are pretty exciting. All the rest of them I'm kind of fine with uh, leaving. They, were, they weren't really like too uh, too cool. And it looks like, um, like we saw in my previous video, they are uh, removing the shadow items. So the new trap claw will be basically just become shadow trap claw, which I'm uh, fine with. The only time... A regular trap claw was uh, impactful. Was when uh, you could like trap claw cheese, so you could see where Karma was gonna throw her uh, ability, and then you could put the trap claw on that unit, and she would you would get a free stun for like four seconds during the late game. But with this rework, the new trap claw should actually be usable in the early game. This new dragon claw rework is really interesting because it still like does the same thing, gives you more MR to counter AP, and then if you get hit by magic or true damage, it launches a fireball at the ability's caster that deals true damage equal to 25% of their maximum health. So it looks like you can definitely counter um, some champions with this. Looks like, I mean, I'm curious if like Brand hits somebody with a dragon claw now. And it, because that deals damage every single second, like does he get, just get blasted with uh, with these uh, these fireballs? Besides that, I mean, at least this should be an, a good slam early game now, because you can actually... It actually does something because uh, a lot of the fights in the early game are, are almost just tanks hitting each other. There's very little uh, magic damage, so Dragon Claw is not really going to be a good slam a lot of the time. But for example, Bramble Vest deals damage to people in a one hex uh, radius around you, so that item actually gives some value early game. So the whole goal here is to not make uh, Cloak Start terrible, and it looks like they're moving in the right direction for that. So the new Hand of Justice, the holder gains both of the following. So it looks like you're just getting 10, 80, 80 in AP and then 10% healing. Uh, at the beginning of each planning phase, one of these buffs are really increased. So so at least now you're always getting some healing and some extra damage. This is really nice because sometimes I've slammed like a Hand of Justice on a Velkos 
and I'm just praying that it rolls healing every single time because I didn't get the items for Gunblade. And so this should make that uh, this item feel a little bit are a little bit less RNG dependent, which uh, is good to see. But you know, it's still gonna have the same issue. Like if you need to roll damage, need to roll healing, you're still gonna be sad, but you're not gonna be as sad because you still get a little bit of power. But this is like equal to putting a sword component and a uh, rod uh, component on a champion when you roll healing. So it should still like it looks more like a big rework. But this item is going to feel very similar. And then I don't get this. It looks, doesn't look like they changed it all. It looks like they just nerfed Titans. Because uh, right now on live, it, you get 3 AD and AP per stack. But now it's only 2. So there's probably some champion that can absolutely abuse this in this new set. Alright, let's move on to the Radiant items. So the first one up is the Radiant Arch Archangel. So this is essentially just a more powerful version of the regular one. It gives you 75% instead of 45. I know a lot of you are probably thinking, oh my god, that's going to be overpowered on Vlad 3-star. Yes, it will, but considering that you don't get the armory until stage 3-6, so that's right before Wolves, uh, you're, you can't really plan for getting this ar armor. So you can't really plan for getting this item. Uh, I think this item is going to be really scary on like a Rakan because he... Does, does a lot of damage. If he kills the unit, then he dashes back and heals for even more. So this could get very snowball-y on Rakan, especially since he's going to probably scale. The healing is probably going to scale with AP as well. So then you got, um, this item is just going to, you can snowball very quickly with that item, especially if you throw like, yeah, some, some, uh, mana items on them as well. Next up is a Radiant BT. Uh, just gives you more healing, and then it gives you a bigger shield and some AD. Not much to talk about there. Just a BT on a just a regular BT, just uh, cracked up. And it's exactly the same story with blue buff. Instead of getting 20 mana after casting, you get 30 mana. You get some AP as well. Just going to be a better blue buff. It's going to be super, super good on like Sigs. Also super good on Karma as well, because she's going to... She's only going to need two autos to cast the first time, one auto to cast the second time. So it's only four autos to cast now. So this is going to be like... If you get this, it's like your clear indication to go Karma. So Radiant Bramble Vest looks like it does the exact same thing, only that you're dealing more magic damage now, and you're also you also get more base armor, so pretty standard there. Uh, same thing with Chalice, you just get more AP to everybody in the row. Uh, you get 50 instead of 20. So this is super strong for like capped invoker boards. So when you have like Heimer, Teemo, and Karma, if you can get this item on all three of those carries, you're gonna have so much AP. It's gonna be nuts. So this is gonna be super good if you have like multiple carries in a comp also redeemed like you could put this on uh you could put this on syndra and then you're buffing both syndra lux and Velkos. so your syndra is actually going to kill Eunice when she throws uh throws them away lux is getting a much bigger shield and Velkos is dealing more damage so don't sleep on this item that's all i'll say and uh the death blade is just a shadow death blade not much to talk about here um if you can get this on aphelios nice but it's probably this item is probably going to need some buffs because like a Shadow Deathblade isn't that much better. Uh, at least in my experience, but we'll see. And then, uh, yeah, this is essentially just uh, regular Dragon's Claw, only that you get more magic resistance and you get some more AP as well. Not much to talk about there, just a stronger version of the Claw. And Radiant Frozen Heart, uh, you get bigger slow, goes to 50%, and you also start with more mana. So this is going to be soup. This is going to be insane on Diana. Holy crap. She's going to cast, like, every time now, even at one star. And so you're, like, going to slow them for so much now. We got Radiant Stoneplate, uh, just more armor and MR. Again, like, this item is only good on solo uh, frontlanders, but it looks like this can snowball pretty hard on Hecarim, because he's going to get so much armor and MR. Especially if you're able to three-star him, that's going to be, like, absolutely insane. We got the new Radiant Giant Slayer. Um, the abilities and attacks do 10% bonus damage. Uh... Yeah, so it looks like the threshold has just been lowered from uh, 1600 to 1100, so now it procs on almost every single two-star frontliner in the game. And it procs on a couple of backliners as well. And since this item is just all abilities and attacks, you can pretty much always take this from the armory, even if you don't know what comp you're playing yet, because you can throw this on both AP and AD carries. This item looks pretty scary, considering the bonus has increased all the way up to 75. So the uh, Radiant GA... 
you heal up to 100% and also get more attack speed. So that looks uh, looks pretty strong. Um, yeah, gonna be really good on like backline carries because you could just uh, you don't care about assassins since you can you can just put them back there alone since the assassins go to the front line after they've killed the backliner, and then he, that carry also gets more attack speed. So probably not as strong as it looks. You just essentially just get two lives, but it still has like the same problem of GA only being good uh, against assassins or versus like frontliners. Like since you get 100 HP, it's still good on tanky units as well. Could be really good on Garen since he gets that, since he gets takedown or more damage after a takedown. So then you could put this on uh, like a solo frontline Garen. He's gonna deal a lot of damage once he dies, uh, and he comes back. Like there's probably gonna be some low HP units, and since he's died, he's gonna have more mana after he revives as well. So he's gonna get that quicker cast. So this item could be insanely good on tanks probably. And the new Radiant Ginsu. This looks like, hey, if you get this item, play KO, since it scales infinitely. It looks like you're no longer capped at 5, uh, 5 Pono attack speed. So yeah, just put this item on KO, that's what it looks like. Other than that, it's completely worthless. This There's one item that needs to buff for like a rework, it's definitely this one, because this... I can't see this item being good on anyone else than Kale, or maybe like a 4 Ranger Aphelios. Yeah, maybe if you play this with 4 Ranger Aphelios, he's going to get like infinite attack speed. But the only issue then is you're just going to be permacasting a spell, even if you can call that an issue. So yeah, it looks like this item is only going to be good on Rangers and Kale. Probably needs a... Probably going to need a rework, because it's never going to go to 5-0 attack speed. Like, it rarely does that. Uh, Radiant Hodge is essentially just Shadow Hodge. Not much to talk about there. Super good and flexible item. Uh, Radiant Gunblade. Heals for 50%. And gets a bigger shield and more AP. So yeah, just a better version of a Gunblade. So any any user that likes Gunblade wants this item. So really a better item on Valkos, for example. Uh, Radiant IE. Yeah, it looks like it's just Shadow IE. So yeah, just if you want crit, use this item. So it's going to be really good on Draven. Going to be good on uh, Aphelios as well. Not much to talk about there. Uh, Radiant Ionic Spark. Uh, so it looks like this has the same part of the first spark where you reduce the magic resistance. And then uh, when they cast the spell, they're sapped taking magic damage equal to 400% of their max mana. I feel like this item looks pretty worthless almost. Although I'm like sleeping on this damage. Because you just deal... It's like a damage item that you only would take if you have a really tanky frontliner that also wants to shred resistances in, a, in an AP comp. So this item just kind of feels very much like just put this item on Garen because maybe if he gets a kill with this um, this item, then he gets the then he procs that new trait he has where he deals uh, extra damage after he's gotten a takedown. So yeah, this item is a bit doesn't feel that strong and it kind of has the same issue of it being only good in this, some cases that I can think of at least right now. All right, the new Radiant uh, JG, they just get even more critical strike damage. So yeah, gonna be good on your AP casters like Velkos, Karma, etc. Uh, new Last Whisper. So when you deal critical strike damage, you shred armor, and you also get a uh, more critical strike chance, which is nice. So you're not gonna be as tied to IE when running this item, which is nice. Yeah, just you know, any user that likes Last Whisper is gonna want this. Uh, new Radiant Locket. This one has already been. Uh, this one is a bit interesting, because uh, when combat begins, the wearer and the allies within two hexes in the same barrel gain a shield that blocks uh, some damage for 60 seconds. I don't even know what this 60 seconds means, because fights last the maximum of 45 seconds. Because uh, it's 30 seconds plus 15 second overtime. It's not sure about the wording here. Unless it's like shared 60 seconds, they can take like 20 seconds of damage collectively. I don't know. I'll be honest, I'm too uh, <laughs> too confused about this item to judge it. Uh, the new Morello. When the holder deals magic damage with their ability, they burn the target, dealing 40% of the maximum HP over 10 seconds, and reduces healing by 50%. So yeah, just a stronger version of Morello, because I think it's at like 20% right now. Not as strong as Shadow Morello, I think, but obviously you don't cut your AP in half, so... You know, this, this would be like insane on Fiddlesticks. 
uh, since you don't want to reduce his AP since you want those resets on his uh, ultimate. Probably also good on Gwen since he uh, like dashes around and all that crap. Um, gonna be good on Garen as well. Obviously, still gonna be insane on uh, Volibear. A stronger version of Morello. Any user that liked Morello is gonna still want Morello. The new Radiant QSS looks like the wearer is immune to crowd control for the first 30 seconds, so you're immune until overtime, which is nice, because you're not going to have any interactions where you become unkillable unless you get CC'd. Gets my attack speed as well, so this is just put this item on Viego and uh, you're good. Yeah, Radiant Death Gap, you get more AP. Any item, any user that likes AP wants this item, not much to talk about there. Uh, new RFC, increased... Increases the warrior's attack range by two hexes and gains 200 bonus attack speed. So just uh, yeah, put this item on Yasuo, that's what it sounds like. Or Jax. Jax and Yasuo are both going to love this item. So the new Radiant Redemption does the exact same thing, only that it heals for 40% uh, now instead of, I don't remember what it is on live, but it's definitely less than 40% because this is a huge amount of healing. It's going to be insanely oppressive in redeemed comps. And it's going to be, in general, just super good on frontliners. 40% healing is almost like healing, healing them for half. So you're going to have to burst people down who have this item. The new Radiant Hurricane. Uh, so you... This looks like they it just fires another bolt dealing 100% of the uh, attack damage and applies on it effects. And you also get more attack speed. So yeah, just a stronger version of Hurricane. Yeah, this item's just going to be insanely good on like stuff like Aphelios because he uh, gets to deal even more AD. And that guy also wants Death Blade, so... Yeah, just generic good item on all these AD uh, casters. And you'd think this item is stronger on Yasuo, but Yasuo doesn't really deal that much AD, so it doesn't really matter on him. Uh, the new Shroud, this item looks super strong, like holy crap. You increase their mana cost by 65%, and then you also get 15 mana for all allies at the start. This is kind of insane, like, you get to cast quicker, and they get to cast slower. Like, this is going to be super strong in, like, invoker comps. It's going to be, like, insanely strong in redeemed comps as well, I think. Because a lot of those spells are super important. Uh, the new Spirit of Sojin, uh, you restore 15 mana, which is actually really huge. Because, uh, when it was 14 mana, a lot of the time you would need one more auto, since, uh, most champions have, like, numbers that are dividable by 10 or 5 as their max mana instead of, and 14 doesn't really add up to that in a lot of cases. But like, uh, now for example, Teemo is only going to cast in, uh, you know, he only needs four autos to cast. And if you have like two or four invokers, it's only, or if you have four invokers, it's only going to be three casts, or three autos to cast. This item just looks, uh, any user that likes Sojin is going to be insanely good with it, and there's also some mana, some users that are going to like it even more because of how the math works out with 15. Uh, the new Static Shift. Every third basic attack, the wearer uh, deals damage, 100, 100 magic damage, and reduces their magic resistance by 50% for 5 seconds. And also bounces to more users, so yeah, it looks like this is going to be like the, the Hellion item. Probably not going to be that useful in any other comps. Uh, if you looks like if you lower all your, uh, your armory uh, and you're playing AP, so you only get like AD Radiant items, uh, but there's a static shift there, you take it, but you're not happy about it. That's what it sounds like to me. Uh, this item is only good in Hellions and like passable in the other AP comps. So Radiant Sunfire, every two seconds a random enemy within four hexes is burned for 40% of their maximum health. Yeah, just a stronger version of Sunfire. Uh, not sure this is going to be that good because Sunfire tends to fall off uh, during like stage, late stage 3, early stage 4. So unless you have like a super tanky comp, this is not going to be that great. Uh, this is going to be super good in like Redeemed. That's all I can think of really. Might also be good on, like, uh, a solo frontline Garen. It's also, like, four hexes, which is a bit interesting, because you can start burning the frontline. But you still have the issue of uh, them getting bursted down. At the beginning of each uh, planning phase, the holder equips two temporary raiding items. Um, so, yeah, this... Essentially, you get two broken items on the champion. Uh, the developers have also said that they are blocking some combinations. So, for example, if you get the Radiant Trap Claw and get the Radiant Shroud... Like, you're essentially making the enemies not being able to cast, and then once they do cast, you have Trap Claw. So there are some combinations that are broken that they're going to remove from this uh, this this Thieves Gloves. But yeah, in general, like, if you don't have any super appealing Radiant items in your armory, and you see Thieves Gloves, you can never go wrong with taking it, because you still get dodge chance. Uh, so it's a good uh, frontline item. Uh, the new Radiant Titans, just a stronger version of Titans. 
any user that wanted Titans before is going to love this item now because you get like, once you get to max stacks, I believe it's 150 AP and AD, and you also get more tankiness. Just uh, probably like Frontline Garen now. It's going to be insane. Especially if you have like, uh, like Titans, Warmogs, and like a GA on Garen, it's going to be absolutely insane because he's like almost always going to get to max stacks. And then he's going to do like a, an absurd amount of damage. So the new Radiant Warmogs. Get more HP, not much to talk about there. It's going to be good on Garen because he scales off max HP. Also going to be good on units that have a lot of resistances, like Redeemed units. Just a generic good uh, frontline item. The new Radiant Seeks. Um, this is essentially the same as Chalice. You buff everybody within one hex next to you with 50%, including yourself. So going to be good on like, stuff like Forgotten because you have a lot of carries there. Also going to be good with Rangers. Also not bad in the invokers for extra amount of generation. Essentially, if you have multiple carries in your comp, you want this item. Or the new Radiant uh, Sephir uh, does the same thing, only that you're uh, sephering them for 10 seconds, and you also get attack speed to all your allies. So don't sleep on this item, especially if you're good at scouting. Holy crap, this is going to be so good. I can see myself taking this a lot. Because uh, 10 seconds, during the late game at least, that's like, your just carry just doesn't get to play the game, it just becomes useless. Oh, uh, new Radiant CC Rot. At the start of combat, the, the holder taunts enemies within two hexes. That's an even stronger taunt. So that's really powerful. So it looks like this just taunts two in two hexes. And they're a bit tankier when they spawn in, so... Since they're not sharing any numbers here, it's very hard to judge this item, but... You know, it should be, uh, should be good in comps that have uh, that lack of frontline. And this item will be okay to take. So that's the same thing where it's weaker if it spawns on the A-bomb. That was everything that comes in set 5.5. Hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed this video, please uh, press like and also subscribe. I would really appreciate that. And this comes out on PBE later today after this video is posted or tomorrow, depending on your region. And also, if you don't have any people to play with during PBE, you can always join uh, the Discord. I'll link that in the description. We're going to be playing in-houses there. I'm going to be playing with viewers as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. And besides that, uh, thank you so much for watching. And let me know if you enjoyed this type of uh, content and I'll see you in the next video.